Hello students, today for First Chapter Friday, I'm going to be sharing Quidditch Through the Ages. This book is going to be for my big Harry Potter fans. Um, if you've read the Harry Potter books and you want to know about the background of Quidditch and how it came to be, this is going to be the book for you. So sit back, relax, and find out if you want to come pick it up at my cart. Chapter 1, The Evolution of the Flying Broomstick. No spell yet devised enables wizards to fly unaided in human form. Those few animagi who transform into winged creatures may enjoy flight, but they are a rarity. The witcher wizard who finds him or herself transfigured into a bat may take to the air, but having a bat's brain, they are unsure to forget where they want to go the moment they take flight. Levitation is commonplace, but our ancestors were not content with hovering five feet from the ground. They wanted more. They wanted to fly like birds, but without the inconvenience of growing feathers. We are so accustomed these days to the fact that every wizarding household in Britain owns at least one flying broomstick that we rarely stop to ask ourselves why. Why should the humble broom have become the one object legally allowed as a means of wizarding transport? Why do we in the West not adopt the carpet so beloved in our Eastern brethren? Why didn't we choose to produce flying barrels, flying armchairs, flying bathtubs? Why brooms? Shrewd enough to see that their muggle neighbors would seek to exploit their powers if they knew their full extent, witches and wizards kept themselves to themselves as long before the International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy came into effect. If they were to keep a means of flight in their houses, it would necessarily be something discreet, something easy to hide. The broomstick was ideal for this purpose. It required no explanation, no excuse if found by muggles. It was easily portable and inexpensive. Nevertheless, the first brooms bewitched for flying purposes had their drawbacks. Records show that witches and wizards in Europe were using flying broomsticks as early as A.D. 962. A German illuminated manuscript of this period shows three warlocks dismounting from their brooms with looks of exquisite discomfort on their faces. Gerther Luckerman, a Scottish wizard, writing in 1107, spoke of the splinter-filled buttocks and bulging piles he suffered after a short broom ride from Monterose to Abertroth. The medieval broomstick on display in the Museum of Quidditch in London gives us an insight into Lochtern's discomfort. A thick, knotty handle of unvarnished ash with hazel twigs bound crudely to one end. It is neither comfortable nor aerodynamic. The charms placed upon it are similarly basic. It will only move forward at one speed. It will go up, down, and stop. As wizarding families in those days made their own brooms, there was enormous variation in the speed, comfort, and handling of the transport available to them. By the 12th century, however, wizards had learned to barter services so that a skilled maker of brooms could exchange them for the potions his neighbor might make better than himself. Once broomsticks became more comfortable, they were flown for pleasure rather than merely used as a means of getting from point A to point B. All right, that's the end of chapter one. I'm going to read you the synopsis. Um, somebody put a sticker online, so I'm going to read uh, it from my phone. This is written by Albus Dumbledore. If you ever asked yourself where the golden snitch came from, how the bulger bludgers came into existence, or why the Wingtown wanderers have pictures of meat cleavers on their robes, you need Quidditch through the ages. This invaluable volume is consulted by the young Quidditch fans on an almost daily basis. Proceeds from the sale of this book will go to Comic Relief, who will use your money to continue improving and changing lives. Work that is even more important and astonishing than the three and a half second capture of the Golden Snitch by Roderick Plumpton in 1921. Okay, so if that sounds good to you and you want to know more about Quidditch after reading Harry Potter, come check it out on my book cart. Hope you're all doing well, and I can't wait to hear what you're reading. Bye.